What did you have in your mouth? What did you have in your mouth, you little sweetie pie? What did you have in your mouth? Hare Krishna, is anyone else on the call? Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Dev. Please accept Any- mine too. All glories to Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada. Okay. How are you, Manasi Ganga Mataji? I am doing fine. I, actually, I, I stayed home today because um, I had sore throat and not feeling um, so good. And I really didn't relax at all. I was working, working, but um, I just needed to to not be at work today <laughs> I don't know um, so yeah just everything's going well I guess um, very good I'm glad to hear about, that are you getting are you feeling better I threw up again today we had to stop oh the car God. and because we were going to my parents house because Ismail had to fix their computer and I'm like Ismail I'm going to throw up and so oh, my shot the car and I threw up outside the car. Well, you know, it's a bug. It's still not completely out of me. You know, at first it was started out with all this head congestion. Then it was, you know, it was like a cold. Then it turned into a cough. Then it turned into chills, uh, you know, a weakness. Now it turned into nausea and vomiting. So it's a nasty, it's a nasty virus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you need to just take care of yourself. What are you doing outside if you're still if you still have the clue? I mean, well, I didn't, you know what? It's not like I feel it every minute. It's like it just suddenly comes on. Do you you know? I was like yesterday. I stayed in bed all day. I did not go to the temple because I I was feeling weak. I got up this morning. I was feeling really great. I mean, really great. And I thought, oh, maybe it's finally gone. You know. And uh, I dress like an Eskimo. I mean, I got thermal underwear on, everything. I mean, I'm really d- dressed like a, an Eskimo. And I went out, and I was fine in the car, and all of a sudden, I started getting the nausea. I'm like, okay, okay, so now please stop the car. I have to throw up. And he, he was, you know, he was like, what is going on with you? I said, I don't know. I mean, please don't blame yeah. me for, I can't help I it. mean, not to be blamed, right? I mean, this is your health. You can't, you can't. I don't know. Regulate it. You can't do anything with it. It just no. happens. And you know what? Flus can be very nasty sometimes. They really can. I mean, I, I can remember one time I had the flu. I was in bed the entire Christmas vacation from school. I did not get out of the house, not for one minute. I was in bed the whole time. Oh, my gosh. A full 14 days without leaving the house. No. So, you know what I mean? It's like, it just takes its course. I've never been... That's sick. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I have. I mean, I've had flus like that, you know, where I can't mm-hmm. get up. Mm-hmm. So, um, not three. This is going on three weeks. This is probably one of the longer mm-hmm. ones. But I told you when I got that shot for the H1N1 at school, they forced us to get it. And I got the H1N1. I was sick on and off for six months. I just mm-hmm. couldn't stop. It just wouldn't, it would go away and then it would come back and then it would go away. Then it would, there was nothing I could do. It just took its course. Mm. Mm. So I did all the right things. Sorry to hear. You know, I took vitamins. I slept properly. That's probably what kept me from getting, going into a hospital or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing all the right things. Well, just Uh, take care of yourself, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Yes. Okay, so um, is anybody else on the line? Hare yes, Krishna. Krishna. this is Lila Manjuri Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so um, today I'm I'm giving class. So um, let's start with prayer. Um, yes, Nati. Like a, a number of us are here, so we'll start. Omegyana tirandasya jananjana salakaya chakshu militanyana daisna shikurave namaha 
Shaitanya mano pesta, tapi dia lebih Saya lupa kedat mayam, tetapi Okay, so today's reading is Sriman Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9. Verses 45 and 46, which ends the chapter. Nara, um, someone has a lot of um, background noise. Could we mute our phones, please? Hare Krishna. Thank you. That's my phone is muted. Yeah, so I don't know if maybe it's Govindan Leela or somebody else that's on the phone. But, but I, I don't hear any. Yeah. I don't hear any noise. I don't either. I, but I heard. Okay. I was hearing some noise. So it was paper moving. Anyway, so um, now I don't hear it. So whatever it was, it's gone. So um, verse forty-five. Nara dai pra praham munaye sarasvatya satanlipa dayayata. Prama paramam vayasya mitate jase. Translation. In succession, O king, the great sage Narada instructed Srimad Bhagavatam unto the unlimitedly powerful Vyasadev, who meditated in devotional service upon the supreme personality of Godhead, the absolute truth on the bank of the river Sarasvati. Purport by A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami. Okay, in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth chapter, verse 13, Narada instructed the great sage Vyasadev as follows. Ato Mahabhaga Bhavan Amogya Drikt Suchi Srava Satyarato Trita Vrata Urukramas Yakila Banda Muktaye Samadina Nus Maratad Vichestitam. O greatly fortunate, pious philosopher, your name and fame are universal, and you are fixed in the absolute truth with spotless character and infallible vision. I ask you to meditate upon the activities of the personality of Godhead, whose activities are unparalleled. So in the disciplic succession of the Brahm, Brahma Sampradaya, the practice of yoga meditation is not neglected. But because the devotees are bhakti yogis, they do not undertake the trouble to meditate upon the impersonal Brahman, as indicated here. They meditate on Brahma Paramam or the Supreme Brahman. Brahman realization begins from the impersonal effulgence, but by further progress of such meditation, manifestation of the Supreme Soul, Paramatma realization takes place. 
and progressing further realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is fixed. Sri Narada Muni, as the spiritual master of Vyasadeva, knew very well the position of Vyasadeva, and thus he certified the qualities of Srila Vyasadeva as fixed in the absolute truth with great vow, etc. Narada advised meditation upon the transcendental activities of the Lord. Impersonal Brahman has no activities, but the, personal, but the personality of Godhead has many activities, and all such activities are transcendental without any tinge of material quality. If the activities of the Supreme Brahman were material activities, then Narada would not have advised Vyasadeva to meditate upon them. And the Param Brahma is Lord Sri Krishna, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. In the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjun realized the factual position of Lord Krishna, he addressed Lord Krishna in the following words. Param Brahma Param Dhamma Paritram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Sashvatam Divyam Hadidevam Ajam Vibhum Ahus Tvam Risaya Sarve Divarsir Naradas Tata Asito Devalo Vyasa Svayam Jaiva Bravisime Arjun summarized the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita by his realization of Lord Sri Krishna and thus said, My dear personality of Godhead, you are the supreme absolute truth, the original person in the eternal form of bliss and knowledge. And this is confirmed by Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyasadeva. And above all, your personal self has also confirmed it. Bhagavad Gita 10, verses 12 through 13. When Vyasadeva fixed his mind in meditation, he did it in bhakti yoga trance and actually saw the supreme person with maya, the lucerary energy and contraposition. As we have discussed before, the Lord's maya, or illusion, is also a representation because maya has no existence without the Lord. Darkness is not independent of light. Without light, no one can experience the contraposition of darkness. However, this maya or, or illusion cannot overcome the supreme personality of Godhead, but stands apart from him, apara shrayam. Thus, oh, therefore, perfection of meditation is realization of the personality of Godhead, along with his transcendental activities. Meditation on the impersonal Brahman is a troublesome business for the meditator as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 12.5. Klesho adhikataras tesam avyaktasakta jetasam. And moving forward to the, the last verse in the chapter, 30, 46. Yad utam tvava pris, yad utaham Sava Pristo Vaitrajat Purushad Idam Yatasitad Upakyaste Prasan Anyam Chakritisnaha. Translation O King, your questions as to how the universe became manifested became I'm from the I again. O King, your questions as to how the universe became manifested from the gigantic form of the personality of Godhead, as well as other questions, I shall answer in detail, in detail by explanation of the four verses already mentioned. Purport. As stated in the beginning of the Sriman Bhagavatam, this great transcendental literature is the ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic knowledge, and therefore all questions that can be humanly possible regarding the universal affairs beginning from its creation are all answered in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The answers depend only on the qualification of the person who explains them. The 10 divisions of Srimad Bhagavatam as explained by the great speaker, Srila Sukadev Goswami, are the limitation of all questions and intelligent persons will derive all 
intellectual benefits from them by proper utilization. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the second canto, ninth chapter, the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Answers by Citing the Lord's Vision. Okay, so back to the translation. Um, of 45, in succession, O King, the great sage Narada instructed Srimad Bhagavatam unto the unlimitedly powerful Vyasadeva who meditated in devotional service upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, on the bank of the river Sarasvati. So, just in, um, in review, we, we've heard that Lord Brahma meditated on the Supreme Lord, and the Lord appeared, and the Lord um, spoke four different truths, about himself and um, his relationship to um, to his energy, and um, I'm just going to briefly um, indicate what those four truths were. The first one: Krishna existed before creation, where there was nothing but Him. In the present, He exists, and also after annihilation, He exists. He is He's eternal. That's what we heard from the first of the shock. Chakra slokas. Um, the second, all that exists is Krishna, but if one's consciousness is such where one does not attach relationship, if one does not um, understand that everything is related to Krishna, then that is Maya. And the third thing is Krishna says that I exist in all things, but also outside of everything. Um, and that's making reference to the fact that he's in everything. Everything is his energy, but he also exists as the Supreme Person um, enjoying pastimes in Braj. And the fourth one is one who searches for the absolute truth must search for all times and all places directly and indirectly. So what I'm hearing there is that um, that one, if one wants to attain Krishna, it's not like one, uh, you know, endeavors and then all of a sudden one attains Krishna and and, um, and there you are, all done. But um, Krishna says that you need to search at all times, all places, directly and indirectly. So one needs to gear one's mind, one's um, words, one's actions, all of those at all times um, and direct them to um, the Lord. And so, okay, so Lord Brahma heard those four truths from um, Lord Sri Krishna. And, um, and what he does once he has that, you know, the Lord disappears again. And um, Lord Brahma, um, being guru, he um, he takes that and he um, he wants to share that with his sons, the information he got, and he um, he his different sons were on different platforms. For example, we heard that Daksha was um, that Lord Brahma disseminated information about Karma Kanda. Um, to Daksha and what is Karma Kanda? It's um, when one follows the rituals in the Vedas to attain better facility to enjoy. Um, so that went to Daksha. Um, Sanatana and other of his sons, and I believe he had 10 sons, um, he disseminated knowledge of Yana Kanda. And what is Yana Kanda? It's when um, it's the path to free oneself from material suffering and to attain liberation. And um, and that's at times called Sahuja Mukti, to um, where one wants to either merge into the fulgence of the Lord or into the actual body of the Lord. But above those two, um, those two paths, which are part of the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the Lord explains those paths as well in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, 
the above those two is upsana, upasana, excuse me, upasana kanda. Um, and what is upasana kanda? It's um, it's the goal. It the goal is to attain prema and and, um, and service of the Lord. So this path is what he, um, Lord Brahma, disseminated or to or um, con convey to Narda, his son Narda. And Narda was very fortunate. Um, he, um, why was he fortunate? Um, he was the beloved son of Lord Brahma because of his different qualities. Um, he was a, an obedient son. He was a humble son. He was enthuse an enthusiastic to serve his father. Um, and these these um, very same qualities um, are the qualities that as devotees um, we should be trying to um, to cultivate obedience to the spiritual master, humility, enthusiasm to um, to move forward on this path of um, bhakti yoga. And so. Um, hmm. Um, and so what we do is um, we're hearing from Lord Brahma, he speaks to, um, oh no, excuse me, from the Lord himself, he speaks to Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma speaks to Narada, and in this verse we hear that Narada approaches Vyasadeva. So um, in this verse, Narada instructs Vyasadev to meditate upon the activities of the Lord. Um, so this process of meditation on the activities of the Lord is a practice that's within our disciplic line. Um, um, but specifically, what is what is one to meditate upon? Um, Srila Prabhupada makes the distinction that um, our meditation should be focused on the Supreme Being, but his um, effulgence. Um, I was hearing a lecture by Bhakti Charu Swami, and he was talking in length about how um, in India um, there's this great misconception um, and he, he coined it as a, a spiritual philosophical misconception that um, a misconception is that beyond and superior to Vishnu is his effulgence um, that the absolute truth is impersonal formless and what he called it uh, Nidakar um, but this is a misconception. It's the opposite of what is actually the truth. The proper conception is that to see that there is Brahman and Parabrahman. Brahman is the fulgence of Parabrahman, Supreme Being. So if Brahman is light, he said, Parabrahman is the source of the light. So one needs to think what is superior to the light itself well the the light the light is dependent upon krishna himself krishna is superior to the to the light itself krishna is the source of the light so um the proper uh progression is well the, the proper focus is to meditate on um, Pada Brahman, Krishna. Um, and Srila Prabhupada talks about this progression. He says, um, there's Brahman realization, and that leads to Paramatma realization, and ultimately to the realization of the Supreme Person. So Narada Muni, being the son of Vyasadeva, he... Um, Um, Narada Muni understood that his son, Vyasa, I mean, Vyasadeva, was fixed in the absolute truth. And so he advises Vyasadeva to meditate on the transcendental activities of the Lord. Um, 
these transcendental activities exist eternally as the Lord, who is a person, who is active, um, and being that he's the supreme personality of Godhead, he's without any tinge of material quality, he's untouched by the three gunas. Um, in Bhagavad Gita, after Krishna reveals his Virat form, his universal form, he speaks. My dear personality, Krishna, I mean, Arjun speaks. Uh, my dear personality of Godhead, you are the supreme truth, the original person in the eternal form of bliss and knowledge. Um, and so uh, this is just confirming what Narada Muni um, knew. So when Vyasadeva fixed his mind in meditation upon the activities of the original person, Lord Sri Krishna, he saw... He saw the Lord with his energy. So, uh, he, Srila Prabhupada used the word contraposition. So, the Lord, he saw in his meditation, he saw the Lord, and besides that, he saw his energy. And um, this illusory energy it sources the Lord himself. Um, and we we hear from, um, we've heard from verse 34 just recently that, um, that if one does not see the Lord's energy in relation to the Lord himself, he can, he's considered to be an illusion. So Vyasadeva being the, um, this great personality that he is, he sees both the Lord and his illusory energy, Maya. Um, and so Srila Prabhupada indicates that one should not limit oneself to focusing on the effulgence of the Lord, but what to say on, on his illusory energy. Um, because what that does is it brings one only to misery, klesha. Um, one should instead fix one mind, fix one's mind on the activities of the Supreme Lord. This is what was um, instructed to Vyasadeva. So the last verse, verse 46, the next one, um, it returns to the conversation between Sukadeva Goswami and King Pariksit. And Sukadeva Goswami tells the king that his questions will be answered as the four chapter sokla, chapter sokla, Sloka verses are elaborated upon. Um, this Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of the Vedas. And so um, all these questions that one can ever come upon in one's mind will be answered because the Srimad Bhagavatam is non different from the Lord Himself. And the Lord is, He is um, full of knowledge, He is the source of all knowledge. And so um, any questions that one may have will be answered in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, so, following in the line of the of you know Lord Brahma to Narada down our disciplic um, line, um, this instruction has personal value to each and every one of us. You know, where um, if if it's been instructed that um, Vyasadeva should be meditating upon the Lord and His activities, um, and we're following in this line, you know, this is something to to um, to aspire for. Um, so how, but. We're not there, <laughs> um, at least I'm not there um, yet. Um, so the question becomes, like, how do we get to that point where we can um, we can meditate upon the Lord and that we can um, ultimately, you know, be um, be able to um, 
in our meditation on his activities. I mean, ultimately, some very fortunate souls actually participate in his leelas. You know, the Lord is there in, his, in the heart of, um, of every living entity. And, um, and for those who are not covered by Maya and, and whose desire is to serve the Lord, if one has great desire to do that, then, you know, those leelas are actually performed in one's heart and one has access to that. So how does one get to that point, um, to that one-pointed devotion? Um, to be able to deeply meditate on the Lord and his activities. And um, recently I've been reading um, Srimana Shiksha, and actually the Srimana Shiksha uh, are instructions to the mind um, written by Raghunath Das Goswami. And it's actually an instruction manual that um, there's 12 verses in there. And, um, and actually, um, it, as as one progresses, you know, from from one stage to the next through these, you know, by reading it, one's not going to be in prema by verse 12. But, you know, as one progresses, you know, you read the book, but um, the instructions are going to take effect, of course, you know, over time. Um, and... But ultimately, if one follows these instructions, one will come to the platform of um, of Bhav. And um, so I saw similarity in um, some of what verse 4 um, was speaking of in this book. And so I, I would like to share that. Um, so I'm going to read the actual verse and then the commentary by... Um, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and then actually, if I have time, um, some contemporary Vaishnavas too. Let me get to that page. Um, so verse four. So the, um, these are instructions on how one, you know, over time can actually um, come to that platform that Vyasadeva, you know, is instructed to to meditate upon the Lord's activities. And so verse 4 in Sri Manashiksha says, O mind, abandon the prostitute of mundane talk, who plunders all intelligence. Do not listen to all the stories of the tigress named Mukti, liberation, who devours all souls. Moreover, moreover I can't say that, moreover, also give up attachment to the husband of Lakshmi, Sri Nar Narayan, who only leaves one to Vaikuntha. Instead, here in Braj, serve Shushu Radha Krishna, who gives one the jewel of one of that of their own love. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Shula Bhaktivinoda Thakur um, comments on this, and he breaks it up into the different parts of that um, shloka. And the first one, and I'm only going to read the English um, just for time's sake. Um, so the first part is um, mundane gossip is like a prostitute who plunders the treasure of the heart. And I'm going to read his commentary. Just as a prostitute takes away wealth and everything else from an immoral person, material gossip plunders one's intelligence. The only wealth of a living being is discriminating intelligence that has spiritual attainment as the goal of life. In contrast, any material gossip in relation to sense enjoyment or any kind of connection to sense enjoyment is all temporary and useless. Even lessons in Shastra, which promote greed for more wealth, sexual pleasure, or connection with people who are attached to sex, are all a spot. Temporary, material, useless. Any process that increases one association with an, att an attachment for temporary useless objects is called a sad vartha. Regarding Krishna conscious intelligence, Sri Ramananda Raya has said the following. If it is possible to obtain intel intelligence absorbed in the ras of pure devotional service to Krishna, then one must acquire it without delay. Intense greed for the rasa is the only price. It cannot be obtained 
even by pious activity and millions of births. births. Two, discussion of mukti or merging into, merging into the impersonal Brahman is like a ferocious tigress which devours everyone's soul. Here the word mukti or liberation refers to Brahma nir, nirvana, also called Vayaja Mukti. This type of liberation involves merging into either the impersonal Brahman and effulgence of God or the body of God directly. Vayaja Mukti negates the eternal individuality of the self. The establishment of the merging of, as ultimate liberation is based on word manipulation. It is not the ultimate truth any more than there are flowers growing in the sky. In reality, the only ultimate truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the possessor of all inconceivable potencies. So here this is addressing what we heard in, you know, in the in the purport of um, that we just read, that you know, one needs to go beyond um, focusing on and meditating upon the um, effulgence of the Lord, but rather one needs to be focusing and meditating upon um, Lord Sri Krishna himself. And um, I liked what he said. It's, um, it is not the ultimate truth. So we're talking about focusing on Brahman, not the Pada Brahman. It is not the ultimate truth any more than there are flowers growing in the sky. Um, those supreme potencies of the Lord are eternal. The divine potency manifests the Lord's transcendental pastimes. In the form of Maya, she creates endless material universes as well as the physical and subtle material bodies of conditioned souls. In her aspect as the marginal potency, she manifests countless, countless minuscule living beings, Jesus, us. Some people are envious of Bhagavan and his devotees. There are some who are apathetic to Bhagavan's name, form, name, form qualities, and pastimes. Consider considering them to be imaginary. Although such envious or apathetic persons continue to suffer the reactions of their karma, they experience some sort of pleasure by discussing impersonal liberation. But that happiness is like the happiness of a criminal who commits suicide in order to escape punishment. So um, it's, so he's comparing that, you know, if someone, um, understands that they've committed a, a crime and they try to escape it, that the punishment, you know, going to jail by committing suicide, it's, you know, it's, it's useless. Therefore, we must very carefully abandon all topics and all contemplation of the process of worship for attaining impersonal liberation. Also, one must give up the association of those who are eager for impersonal liberation. Such liberation is like a tigress who devours the soul. Then Srila, Gopas, Srila Rupa Goswami explains, the desire to enjoy the material world and the desire to become liberated from material bondage are considered to be two witches who haunt one like ghosts. As long as these witches remain within the heart, how can one feel transcendental bliss? Those dedicated devotees whose minds are always absorbed in the loving service of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna never have the slightest desire for impersonal liberation. Third point on the verse, um, the attachment of Lakshmi Pati Narayan takes one to Vaikuntha. The abode of Narayan is known as Pada Vyoma or Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. There, the supreme personality of Godhead, the possessor of all opulences and fool, resides eternally. In this abode, one can achieve four kinds of liberations by serving the husband of Lakshmi, Narayan. Number one, achieving the same features as, and form as Narayan. Number two, living in Narayan's close association. Three, residing on the same planet with Narayan. And four, obtaining the same opulence as Narayan. Um, I'm looking at the time. It's okay, five minutes or so. Um, so Sri, Srila Rupa Goswami describes this as, although this book, and he's making reference 
to the nectar of devotion, has suggested that a devotee give up all five kinds of liberation, still four of them are not very much against bhakti. These four types of liberation may be motivated by either the desire for personal opulence and happiness or by the desire of prema, for prema and service to Krishna. So um, even those who are aspiring for any of those liberations, um, you know, they need to think what is their, what is their motivation. Um, However, one pointed devotees of the Lord who desire to experience only the sweetness of prema do not accept any type of liberation to Vaikuntha. Among all these devotees, those whose minds have been stolen by Govinda are the best. Even the favor of the Lord Lakshmi Narayan cannot capture their minds. Although in principle there is no difference between the forms of Narayan and Krishna, Krishna is superior due to the principles of Ras. Um, okay, and four, giving the jewels of their own love. Fa rati dao also means atma rati dao. The soul of all souls is Sri Sri Radha Krishna, and the love that each individual has towards them is called atma rati. That love is covered by various desires born of ignorance. When souls are enchanted by Maya, although such love is the jiva's eternal dharma in the perfected state. And so I'm going to read uh, just quickly um, some of this, the examples of this love that our um, acharyas, previous acharyas have for Lord Shri Krishna. And there, some of them are formed in, um, in prayer. So, may the cowherd boy, who is a festival of ecstatic bliss for the hearts of the fortunate creatures residing in the groves of Govardhan, who in eagerly enjoys loving pastimes in the forest of Vrindavan with the gopis and whose complexion is as splendid as a great sapphire, eternally enjoy transcendental pastimes in our hearts. Um, so let me just pick one more. Um, we're coming time. Um, so Mah Mahavendra Puri says this, I pray that a certain cowherd boy who expertly casts amorous glances from the corners of his beautiful restless eyes, whose splendid cheeks are decorated with glistening, swinging sharp-shaped earrings, and who, are, who is very eager to enjoy the rasa dance with the radiant girls of Raj, may at once appear within my heart. So um, this is, what I'm hearing from this is that um, on this path of on this path of bhakti yoga, um, the goal while we're here, well, the goal is prema and um, prema and um, pure devotional service, and ultimately, hopefully, um, ending up in Vraj, um, serving the Lord. Um, but to get to that point, um, there's a lot of work to be done. And this verse, along with all the other verses, it gives you instructions on, on what to do. And, um, and one of the ones, especially one of the um, instructions was, um, which w overlapped a lot with, um, with the purport that we were reading earlier, is that um, to not, um, you know, that we need to be, we need to be meditating on the Lord um, and not on his effulgence. And our desires need to be such that we are not, you know, um, that we don't want to merge into the effulgence of the Lord or into his um, bodily form um, service. You know, we want to, we want, because when one does that, you know, when you take, when you take um, the personal aspect out of God, um, what you're doing actually is you're taking away um, one service to the Lord. Because, you know, in, if one is, trying to attain the fulgence of the Lord or, or merging into his body, there's no, there's no service to be done. There's no relationship 
at all. Um, the all that you know, one is um, one is serving oneself in in that aspect. You know, what is this um, yana yoga? I heard from uh, from a class with um, Chandramali Swami. Uh, this yana kanda is when one is trying to free oneself from suffering. That's serving oneself. Um, so this Manashiksha says, you know, in this verse, that don't listen to those stories of, of liberation. Um, abandon the prostitute of main, mundane talk. And, and in reading, I don't have time, but um, this mundane talk is not limited to just like conversation you know, between two devotees that is non-devotional. It's also um, also watching TV, even, you know, watching documentaries or, um, or reading newspapers or, um, or reading literature, all that, all that, what that does is it takes away one's focus on the Lord. If we only have a certain amount of time, you know, if we only have a certain amount of energy within this human life and we occupy it with um, what, you know, this category mundane talk and, and, all, and the worst of all the prostitutes, actually, Sachinanda, um, Sach, Sachinandana um, Swami says is actually fault finding that is he says it's the most luxurious of all the prostitutes you know but anyway so if one is going to occupy one's mind's consciousness with this broad category of mundane talk then one does not have time or energy to um to focus on the lord you have just taken away that time it is um it's no longer available to you you know, um, and so that's one reason why, like, we were not to have Prajalpa, you know, because it's taking away this valuable time to meditate on the Lord. And we just heard in this, um, in this purport and translation 45, uh, verse 45, that, you know, within our disciplic succession, what we should be, we should be getting to, we should be where we can um, actually um, meditate on the Lord and his activities and enter into his pastimes. Um, so, you know, do not, do not abandon, it says abandon the prostitute of mundane talks. Um, do not listen to the stories of the Tigris named Mukti. Um, and then, you know, one should watch you know, to whom one, um, who is one's worshipful, worshipful deity, you know, um, if, you know, because if your deity of worship is um, Narayan, you're, you know, it's going to lead you into Vaikuntha as opposed to, um, to, um, which is also the spiritual world, but it will lead you on a different path. And, um, and if one is um, focusing and, and trying to serve Shushi Radha Krishna, um, we hear from this verse also that um, they're going to reciprocate and give the jewel of their love. And so I don't know what time it is now, but it was probably late to 49 after. Okay. So um, that's pretty much what I, what I got out of this. Um, it was very nice. I, didn't feel well enough to go to work today, so I sat and read all day long and heard lectures. <laughs> I really like that. Um, so if, um, please add, correct, um, if you so please, if you so desire to. Thank you, Marisi Ganga Mataji. I particularly appreciated the point that you made about um, uh, like uh, Monday, discussing mundane topics, and uh, like uh, I was, I, I myself and Premarisa, we were talking about the same thing this morning, and we were saying, uh, we were thinking that even those topics that seem important, 
and that need to be discussed um uh if uh i mean uh, it has to be um, like dealt with carefully because um it, like as you said like it really can take us away from uh, taking shelter of krishna although we may be devotees and uh, we may be talking about things that are uh, important to us that are um bothering us but if um uh it, it's not dealt with properly then uh, it can actually take both people who are in the conversation away from krishna so um, i think that's something to watch out and um, this human form of life is very rare and um uh like it's 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 best to engage ourselves as much as possible uh to think about krishna thank you mataji thank you mataji right so we only have a limited amount of time in this life and hopefully you know we attain another human birth um so that i mean and again i mean there's so much work i mean if we actually want to end up in the spiritual world just think of that like the, the gopis and the gopas of um in the spiritual world who are serving um shishirata krishna they're that every 100% of their mind 100% of their actions their words are focused on the lord and i'm just thinking about how far i am from that and how um and so i i really appreciated what you said though um we can even be talking about our services and actually it could be considered prajalpa if it's not um like in verse i think it was oh, Gosh, 42. I I'm not sure. I think it was I can't remember which one it was. Mm, no. It's one of those four verses. Like we have to see everything in relation to Krishna like uh even talking about service can can um can be distracting because it's um if we're not seeing it in relation to pleasing Krishna um then then it's um i think you know not not worth the not worth the endeavor of going through it like and right so devotees do need to to speak about you know things that are bothering them but uh, we need to tie it to krishna as we're um as we're doing it we're you know ultimately to um to desire to please the lord by maybe getting rid of this bad feeling one has or this you know whatever but i mean to just want to get rid of the feeling or to just talk through something but not to tie it to trying to please the lord then i think that um then it's you know it's useless for job to talk yeah thank you but if you want to that point yeah thank you for mentioning that mantri and one of the things that one devotee once mentioned to me and um like i'm noticing it more and more in my life and in the life of other devotees um like is uh, we have to also like um check in with ourselves to see how we are feeling if as devotees if we are actually practicing krishna consciousness and if we are able to actually think of krishna we should be feeling bliss and um right. if uh, if if it is um like you know if we are talking and if the mind is talking about fear especially fear fear um, can only exist if we have forgotten krishna exactly i've heard that in glasses yeah so many times like you know because you're not taking shelter yeah i'm sorry Yes Mataji. So one of the devotees once was just mentioned to me. Yes Mataji, go ahead. <laughs> Which I'm sorry. Well, fear especially like you said because if one um 
is actually taking shelter of the Lord, then one has no fear. If one is not taking shelter of the Lord, then one will have fear because the Lord, the Lord takes care of his devotees. And so, um, yeah, anyway, so that's, I'm sorry, please continue. No, you're fine, Mataji. Yeah, I mean, that's the understanding. And um, one a devotee told me, like, um, like if there are uh, feelings of depression um, and um, like a- anything, like, you know, we see um, within our heart, um, uh, uh, like um, Maya comes as these feelings, as these emotions, mm. like depression, fear. All these things are nothing but Maya. Mm. So we can detect it in ourselves. And um, like some adjustments need to be made because um, really, if we can think of Krishna, it's only bliss. And um, so that's something uh, to consider. Mm. To get to that point, Mm. something to work towards. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, does anybody, it's 57 after, does anybody else have something that they want to talk about? Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, this is Rushali. Um, I uh, I was just Hare thinking Krishna. about this um, text 45 on the page uh, 5 to 4. Um, here when Bhagavad Gita verse is written in that Arjuna, where Arjuna describes about supreme personality of god krishna he also mentions the name uh, vyasadeva in this shloka i was just thinking um was arjuna that time aware of vyasadeva who vyasadeva is my uh, i thought so i has written uh, bhagavatam and all the vedas after that so leela mantri would you like to answer that? I, I do not know if um, what what she's asking okay. specifically or the answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can tell, Mataji. Uh, but what exactly is the question? I'm sorry, I missed. Uh, that I, if Arjuna knew about Vyasadev, like where exactly is it stated? Yeah. Which, uh, it's on the 45, yeah. but last uh, where um last shloka uh, of arjuna describing about supreme person uh, krishna uh, arjuna summarized the purpose of the bhagavad gita by his realization of the lord shri krishna thus said my dear personality of godhead you are the supreme absolute truth the original person in this he has um it is also written and this is confirmed by uh Narad, narada uh, Asita, Devala, and Vyasadeva. Yes, yes, yes. So, I found in the purport. Uh, I was just thinking, was Arjuna aware of uh, uh, Vyasadeva and Devala? I'm, I just, I'm just thinking about Vyasadeva. Because I thought Vyasadeva has written, these uh, came into picture after that, right? I mean, he wrote Vedas and all after that happening, everything, right? Yes, yes. You are, yeah. you are correct that Vyasadev compiled um, like the Vedas after um, the Lord departed from this world. That yeah. means Krishna departed from this world. So you are correct. But at the same time, uh, there are two points that we can see, look from. Uh, Vyasadev is also, like if you know the history of Mahabharata, Vyasadev is also... Um, uh, remember, like, um, there are two sons uh, of uh, Shantanu um, who was who married um, uh, who, um, uh, Mother Ganga. She he first married Ganga, and he first he gave birth, both of them uh, gave birth to many children, but only Bhishma Dev was. Um, the living child and then after Krishna Dev took uh, he took a vow 
by saying i will not become the king because uh, his father again fell in love with a uh, precious woman mm mm-hmm. uh, uh and uh, um so when his father wanted to get married to her he the uh, the uh, father of the fisher woman uh she he said i can get um, her married to the king only on one condition if my sons become king okay so so uh so actually after he gets married to um satyavati satyavati is the name of the fisher woman after he gets married to satyavati he again has two sons chitrangaja and vichitravirya but both of them die untimely so she is the wives of chitrangada and vichitravirya again in those days it was permitted that they could bear children from um the uh, brothers uh, of her husband if the husband was not able to uh, give a child and especially because they were kshatriyas they needed to have a heir to the throne so um at that time satyavati actually is also the mother of yasudev okay so this is a long story actually this is described in mahabharat and uh, it's also described in some of the chapters of shrimad bhagavatam how yasudev was born he was born to parashara and satyavati okay this is in this is in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam this story is described so satyavati actually marries um shantanu but at the same time like she also has uh, vyasadev as her son so vyasadev in one sense is the father of um, pandu and dhritarashtra he is not oh yeah because he he bears um, when vyasadev actually was uh, in uh, performing deep austerities in the forest but he had given a promise to his mother that as soon as you think of me i will come in front of you so he was performing deep meditation in the forest and when chitrangada and vichitravirya they die unexpectedly satyavati immediately uh, thinks of vyasadev so vyasadev appears at that time and she says like you know we immediately need a heir to the throne because both my sons passed away so he says like can you wait my dear mother i will perform finish my austerities and come to have um, like you know to have sons and then she says no no i cannot wait so the queens actually because um bhishma dev was also um the brother of um, pandu and um the uh, in one sense we can call him as the elder brother because he is the step brother of pandu and uh, sorry not pandu and ritrashtra um chitrangada and vichitravirya they were expecting that um bhishma dev would come into the room but suddenly they saw the first queen um amba ambalika and ambika um so one of them leaves but the other two queens actually when they suddenly see vyasadev in the room the first the first queen the first time she closes her eyes because she couldn't bear the sight of um yasudev he he was he had performed austerities he had this um thick hair and uh, matted hair and he was covered with ashes and dust and he just walks into the room so she closes her eyes out of uh, fear that's why dhritarashtra was born because at the time of conception she closed her eyes so dhritarashtra was born blind and then pandu uh, when when vyasadev again comes um, to the room of the second queen she turns pale because already her sister told her like you know that you know it's not bhishma dev it's going to be vyasadev who is going to come but in spite of getting the warning as soon as she sees vyasadev she turns pale because now she knows she cannot close her eyes because that's the mistake the first queen did but she turns pale so pandu was born pale but the third person the third time the uh, mother in law she says 
this is not proper because first boy was born blind the second boy is pale now we need someone who is like who can be the king actually so the third time they both are scared so they uh, they send a maid servant and the maid servant she immediately honors uh and uh, invites yasudev she she knows that he is such a great saint so her mood is completely proper to receive yasudev so that's why um vidura was born vidura was born out of um from uh, the meeting of yasudev and the maid servant so yasudev existed before um arjuna because in one sense like he is the um great grandfathers okay okay mataji thank you yeah and from another perspective because um although vyasadev wrote this vedas and everything before um i mean after after the mahabharat um the whole incident happened still um like the knowledge about the supreme personality of god it is eternal before kaliyuga this knowledge um was only in spoken form because people were so intelligent that they could remember everything just by hearing once from the spiritual masters but because of the advent of kaliyuga uh, we we our memories are very short in kaliyuga so out of compassion for the people of kaliyuga um yasa they actually wrote everything down because if it's not written down they will not remember anything so this knowledge existed even before the knowledge about krishna and knowledge about the vedas everything ayurveda dhanurved all these things existed only in spoken form that yasa they had to write it down later on when kaliyuga was coming Okay. Thank you, Martha Di. Thank you, Rishali. It was nice to meet you yesterday. Yeah, same here, Martha Di. I actually always get confused. Your voice is very similar to uh, Prema Rasa Martha Di. So yesterday I came to know you are uh, her sister, actually. Yeah, even my mother gets confused. <laughs> okay. Um does anybody else have any questions or things they would like to add or correct? Okay. So, um thank you and we'll meet again tomorrow at 5. Jai Shri Mukhopad. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Jai. Hari Krishna. Thank you. Jai. Thank you.